Small days are often regarded as the poor cousin of big, formal driven days. This season's adventures in the field have shown me that quite often the opposite is true. And this day's shooting in the Welsh mountains proves this point well. This has been one of the best days shooting of my life. And I've forgotten how much I love this. Yeah. The ingredients today were eight friends clad in tweed, beautiful countryside. And fine guns held firmly in our hands. All serenaded by birdsong, wing beats and laughter. Often walked up shooting is looked down on by those who shoot driven game. Something beautiful like this, something sustainable, something really low impact that is perhaps even more special. There were hills filled with a million possibilities waiting for us this morning. Wow! Lock on, move, no time for thought. All that training you've put in at the clay ground through your entire life, all that experience level up until now. This day, days like this, gets to the essence of what hunting with a shotgun is all about. That is where this comes into play. And we could not wait to discover what memories were to be made. <laughs> I, I used to like Simon until I had to carry his massive pheasant. While my knees are still working, why the hell are I not doing this? More. Why not do it? So last time we chased wild birds, which was a pretty exclusive special opportunity. It was, yeah. This time, we're gonna go for something a little bit more accessible. Yes, but we're gonna work hard to get it. Great. You're gonna be doing a lot of miles. Oh yeah. Over some interesting countryside, and you don't know what you're gonna see. Things that are in season are on the menu, and it's gonna be good fun, because you just have no idea when you're gonna get a shot, and what you're gonna be able to... Everything today is going to be earned and not given. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah, the best way and my favourite form of shooting. All right. Let's go. You ready? Yeah, ready. <laughs> we're going to push all that up. When we get right to the end, the mountain. The mountain. We're going to slow down and those parts will naturally right. just start peeling back. That'll be good. And then back to the cars. Drink. And then more. Shooting. If we can manage. Yep. Perfect. I don't know if I expected Wales to be dry. It's not dry. It's always sunny in Wales, apparently. No coat because uh, it's going to be sweaty up that mountain. I somehow got lucky this morning and got to work the valley bottom. Lucky only because it was much more predictable underfoot than I would encounter later that day. Today is about getting back to the basics. It's about trying to hang on to a mountainside. Shoot at the same time as the heart rate is sky high, you're sweating buckets, but you're having a great time. We walked uh, 400 yards downhill, both of us are now tired. This is my kind of shooting, it has been all my life. Assortment of dogs, assortment of countryside, keep your wits about you, try and get on the right foot when the bird breaks and see if you can shoot it. It's, it's fantastic fun. I've been here, I know what the mountains are like, there was no way of me bringing a 12 pole. I, all of my American <laughs> friends like small gauges because they actually work. Yeah. They work to find their birds. You've just got to put it in the right place, haven't you? Although we had a number in mind, days like today aren't about the bag of birds. This is about a tradition older than these hedgerows. A tapestry woven with the thread of camaraderie and the mutual love of hunting in the outdoors. I mean, that was an embarrassing first barrel miss. Oh, got busy very quickly. It's the beauty of walked up shooting though, right? You don't have the time to repair. You're walking, a bird gets up. Your heart rate's always high. Your attention level is always high. And then before you know it, everything accelerates at Mach 9. Luckily, the second barrel brought it down. And even luckier, James's dog retrieved it, so he's going to have to carry that really heavy looking cock bird up the mountain. Oh, he might be coming this way for me to carry it, actually. That's heavy. Your success. I said partridge only. 
Well, being weighed down with the weight of your responsibilities is something that you get with deer stalking and deer hunting all the time, right? Because once you've shot a big animal, 80, 100 kilos, you've got a lot of work to do. A lot of time with driven shooting, you have pickers up, you don't have the weight of your responsibilities. Certainly makes you think more about pulling the trigger another time. I saw a woodcock land in these woods that we flushed earlier. They walked in, it flew up, hooked around, and Tom just got it. I just love this kind of shooting, hunting, and I love standing a driven day too, but I, I, I don't think that one is complete without doing the other. Game shooting has become a source of income for many estates across the UK, and a good portion of that money is reinvested back into the conservation of over 5 million acres of land. The low income of small days to an estate often leaves them brushed aside, but I for one value each bird shot on a day like this at a much higher price than one on a driven day. And I wouldn't be against days like this increasing in price if it meant that they were more viable to estates and hence more available to shooters. Slight rejig just went to drop the birds off in the car because we're about to go and head up the mountain. We've had a little rejig. DC's moved up the line, I've got Simon and Sarah next to me. So a little bit of pressure there. We're about to walk through this big gorse and heather bank. Very likely to be full of partridges. It's gonna get a, I say maybe busy, it's gonna get exciting. It's fantastic and great shooting driven game, but this is another level of difficulty. And you get to find out what the people you're shooting with are like. Would you like me to get that, Simon? Yeah, I've got it. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I used to like Simon until I had to carry his massive pheasant and I'm now covered in a little bit of whales. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bird in the bag, mud on the breeks. <laughs> bird flew over, I'm 30 yards behind the line, retrieving birds. We'll get there. We'll get there. Get far. That's not. I've been playing with this 28 for a little while, Tom's trying to sell it to me. And I have discovered that 16 grams are more potent than 28, 25. I uh, didn't want to carry that. Uh, <laughs> I've already got two big fat cock pheasants. Let's not add to that pile quite yet. Let's go pick that up. It's a big old bird. You've been shooting pretty straight. I mean, I expect nothing less, of course. I haven't shot this gun for ages. I love, I've forgotten how much I love it. I can remember the last bird I killed with it. Shots like that live in the memory. Well, that's what it's all Shots about. like that cock bird will live in the memory. Often you don't need many. No. <laughs> Yours! Sharp. Here. Where are you, dog? Here. You've got to be mindful of absolutely everything because you've got people up the hill shooting. You're working hard, you're breathing hard, you're trying to think what you're doing, you're trying to shoot accurately, but you've really got to watch anything breaking left up that hillside. You must have clear sky. You cannot shoot in the hill and you cannot be tempted. Anyone who doesn't believe in the hunting gods has clearly never been blessed by them. Simon was their chosen one today as the birds pulled to him like a magnet, each one encountering his well-seasoned ability with a shotgun. It was a joy to watch. The beauty of hunting more open ground like this is you get to see what's going on. I got to watch Simon shoot. Unbelievable, I mean, the man's a talented shot, but the birds peeling back. Simon was so fast on him, but that's years of experience. And you don't come out on something like this and sort of hit instantaneous success. It requires work, training, discipline and familiarity with your gun and the terrain, how to move in different environments, and that's all part of a day like this. Let alone the work that's put back into the ground, the conservation work that goes on with any game shoot that's run like this. Had a little reshuffle, Simon's now on the far right flank. I've moved over a bit and Michael's been brought down into the sweet spot so he can get a bit of shooting. It was a bit quiet for him at the top of the hill. Let's pay some attention. When you're not stood under clouds of driven pheasants and left with plenty of time to think, it allows you to take in much more of what's happening on the day and really focus upon every small facet. You remember every opportunity that presents itself, whether or not you connect with the bird. It's just a community spirit, strangely, right? It's more of a community spirit because you have to work together. 
you know, it's not wild birds. You couldn't have a wild bird like this that was accessible to people like me and you and anybody who just gives James or someone similar a call and books a day out. But it's, it's close in some regards, and that's important. With all that cover worked out, we headed back to the cars, stopping only to retrieve a few birds we'd left. Just because this is a small day in the mountains doesn't mean that all semblance of civilization was left behind. And of course we shared a delicious tailgate elevenses, recounting how the morning had gone from each other's perspectives, who missed and who hit the birds that people claimed were shared. Elevens is over. It's time for more walking. See that mountain over there? We're gonna walk around this mountain, that mountain, and end on that mountain before walking back through the valley and up to the cars. I'd say I'm feeling fit, but uh, luckily I'm cold now. Be bold, go cold, that's the way, right? Go cold, go into it. Anything could happen up here. They don't release any birds on this side, so anything we see is gonna be kind of incidental. Let's rock and roll. This is lonely, you can't see what's going on. This is much harder going than before. This is gorse. For those of you who aren't aware of what this is, it's short, it's spiky, and uh, it gets through tweed. 100% there'll be a rash on my legs and my sensitive, sensitive skin. How is hardship fun? The human brain is a wild thing. <sighs> Walk this first bit, we're headed now over to that next peak. Different birds smell different. And then when you're after a bit of a variety of species, you learn so much about how dogs work and what they use and what they're good at. And it's all just part of the, the joy of being out. <sighs> this is serious terrain. Special place to be. I mean, look at that view. You don't get better than that. The scenery was beautiful, but the cover was thick. And we ploughed through it, filling our boots with sticks and thorns, serenaded by the shots and cheers of the rest of the team just out of sight over the ridge. Doing this kind of thing, you gotta stay on your toes. Birds can come from anywhere. Always extolled the virtues of reeks and socks. But five foot deep, six foot deep gorse. A labyrinth of, I mean, I. That was hard cover. I don't want anyone saying that we're soft in England. Whew. Or Wales, as the case may be. Oh, mate. Hey, it was worth it, I got a pheasant. Good lad. Days like this are very accessible, both in the lack of snobbery that comes with them, but also in price point. Walked up shooting can be found from around 30 pounds per bird and can range up to 50 pound a bird. You can find or book days like this through websites like Guns on Pegs or some social media channels, or after a few seasons of going out and meeting new people, you'll do like me and phone up an old friend and see what they've got. The phrase given and not earned was coined by a friend, Reed. And it is no truer now than stood before yet another short, sharp incline in a series of small, short, sharp inclines. They're small, it's like 10 meters. But behind everyone could be partridge, and that's what keeps us going. Go on. As we reached the track, we took a second to admire Simon Snipe before starting again across the mountain. Moorland is a stronghold for snipe and you have to get up there to find them. But they are fantastic eating and incredibly difficult to shoot. Hence the origin of the term sniper. A sniper was somebody who was very, very good with the gun. Now it's developed into being good with the rifle, but the origins came from shooting snipe in bog and in moorland like this. It's amazing, you have to be so fast because they get up with no warning, there's no sound until they're on the wing, they're flying low fast across the heather and then they go up and they twist and they turn almost every half a second. Yes, it's by design, but it's also by luck. <laughs> um, and they look great on toast. Simon's had so much luck, I would take his lucky gun. Mostly just slow him down. Right, that was some epic shooting all day. Thanks, it's been, uh, this has been one of the best days shooting of my life. It's just, this is what I grew up doing and I love it. And I've forgotten how much I love this. Yeah, just to add a mountain in versus what you grew up doing, yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah, it's a little bit different terrain to where I used to. <laughs> it's basically Norfolk. But, <laughs> yeah, welcome you know, to Norfolk. <laughs> but while, while my knees are still working, before I get to 50, why the hell are I not doing this? More. As do you. <laughs> Mate, good luck at the top of the hill. I'm Thank sure you. that's where, once again, all the bells will fly. <laughs>
And as we rounded a corner for the final stint, the hard work we'd put in started to pay off as those same birds that now sat tighter to our feet and dogs flushed once more. Oh, that was one of those moments you remember forever. That bird peeled off the cliff. Came over like 45 yards, 50 yards. Never shot this gun before in my life, but I've seen Simon do it. Hey, go, it must work. Boom, right barrel and brought it out there for good. And... I always knew that Simon was never a talented man. He just had good tasting guns, right? Amazing. And this is why we do what we do. 25,000 steps to this one moment. Amazing. Each successful shot being followed by the roar of cheers up and down the line. I understand that 12 balls are just more potent and I'm so much more used to shooting them, but oh, my last two walked up days I've taken a side by side. This is what they were born for. You learn about a lot about yourself in these sort of situations, how you handle pressure, how you handle arduousness, how do you handle these relationships with your co-hunters, how you feel when they're successful, how you feel when they're not. And this is why this kind of hunting is so important. On a peg, you can feel so insulated from that. You can really be in your own world, but on a day like today, you're so involved in this community and that is important. Everyone's 100 yards ahead. There's a lot of shooting going on. We best catch up. We've pushed them up into this little goyle here. Gulch. Let's get into the gulch. Wow. <laughs> and so first thing Simon shouted was not for sale. Every time I take one of his guns, hold on. Well, this is what they were designed for. Over and unders are fantastic, don't get me wrong, but they're so purposeful. Here, lock on, move, no time for thought. All that training you've put in at the clay ground through your entire life, all that experience level up until now, that is where this comes into play. And the beauty of the journey to get to the point I'm at, and, and even further, put someone like Simon's out, is every step is an adventure, and that in itself. I can't help feeling almost completely fulfilled after a day of hunting with others. When I reach the of my and just like that, with tired bodies, full game bags and even fuller hearts we started the long walk back to the car. Motivating each other every step of the climb. Today's not over however, we had all earned a big dinner. One of my pet hates is when you go on a game shoot and you don't eat game. It's what you're there for and it's delicious. So the night before I had made up a partridge curry with some birds from this season that we could all sit around and share. Sharing a meal together at the end of the day is only as important as the team you're with. And I wanted to extend this day for as long as I could before the long drive back to reality. Can little days like this be just as prestigious as a big driven day? Well, I guess that depends on whether you think the real bounty of a day's hunting lies completely in your game bag. For me, a few birds in the bag obviously matter. But it's the mutual thrill of a well-flushed bird, hopefully a well-placed shot, all done with a beautiful backdrop. Because you really feel like you've earned what you shoot and it all comes back, goes on the table. You're in beautiful scenery like this with your mates and Sasha. It's the shared groan when someone misses a once in a lifetime opportunity and the stories that will be shared between us eight mates for years to come. Every one of us left a piece of ourselves up on that hill that day. And every one of us brought a little piece of that hill back home. We learned something about ourselves and grew as people and friends. And for that alone, this is the last sort of hunting I would give up.
thank you for watching guys. This channel is made possible by our amazing sponsors. You can find out more about them in the description down below. And if you want to support the channel, you can join as a member. You get loads of extra content, well, some extra content, and occasionally we hook up and go clay shooting together as a membership group. If you don't feel like joining today, we really appreciate you watching and subscribing. Have a wonderful day.